So numbered.studio, the hero row on the x-axis changes images. In my honest opinion, when I first looked at this website, I was like, what is Richard talking about? I don't, I don't know. I just went to scroll down. I was like, which section is he talking about? Like, I don't get it. And it wasn't until I accidentally moved. Well, I mean, not accidentally. I just randomly moved my mouse to the left. And I was like, whoa, what, what just happened? What, what just happened? And then I was like, oh, I get it. So in my opinion, this user experience right here, where it made me jump or go or get surprised, I was like, yeah, that's not good. You got to tell people, hey, if you hover over something, something's going to happen. So um, first, we're going to create this interaction. And then second, we're going to explore ways, maybe explore one way to maybe fix the user experience so it's not jarring to the point where you're like, oh my God, this changed. That scared me. If you have any ideas already, um, let me know once I'm done with the first tutorial because I want to know your opinion. I have an idea, but I'm still not sure if it's the best user experience. Okay? So let's get to it. So only thing I did on this blank project is upload four space photos from Unsplash. That's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a hero row. I'm going to drag in a section. And this section right here, I'm just going to call it hero. Is my zoom working? Yes. I'm going to call it hero. I'm going to give it a height of 100 VH, which means viewport height. I do not know why Webflow gives it a padding of 75, 75, because that's actually false. Yeah, there is no padding of 75, 75, it's just height 100 VH. Man, why can't Webflow be perfect? <laughs> Anyways, just kidding. All right, so we have that hero. And now we need to overlay we need to stack photos on top of each other and there's two ways to two ways to do that i'm thinking we'll just go with the css position way because there's you can do css position using relative and absolute to stack things on top of each other or you can do css grid where you just make all of the images uh set to position manual i mean um float and uh, manual and that way you can stack them on top of each other so we'll do actually i can show you both yeah it's an education stream so let me show you the css position way to stack photos on top of each other so let's go ahead and do that so right here in position oh gosh Position, we're going to set it to relative because the images inside of it are going to have position absolute. So it needs something to relate to, hence relative. All right. And so let's drag in our first image of space. Is that broken? How come I? There it goes. Took a while for it to load. All right, so we're gonna call this image one. Actually, no, sorry. I'm gonna give it a selector of image. Okay, so it has a, a class name of image and I'm going to set that as position absolute. I'm gonna set it to the, let's set it to, let's set it to, yeah, top left, okay. And we'll also make sure that the width and height are 100 VW for full viewport width and 100 VH for full viewport height. And because we may get some skewedness because we're setting the size and height, let's make sure that this fit is set to cover. Cover, bam. Okay, so there we go. We got our first one. And so, 
With this, I'm going to set a combo class of number one. The reason why is because all the images are going to use this first parent selector and will have all of those um, CSS properties that I've set. The only difference between the four is the Z index. So Z index for this, this one's just gonna be on the very bottom. So I could just leave it alone or set it at zero. The default is zero or auto. So you don't, even, you don't really have to set it, but if you want, you can, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Cool. All right, next, let's copy and paste this. And then for this, I'm going to just click here, delete it, and add a number two. For number two, I'm going to give it a Z index of two, which is higher than zero. So that means this is stacked on top of the other one. And let's double click it and replace the image with the next one. And there we go. So if I hide number two, display none, it shows number one. If I remove that, it shows number two. So we're good. So now let's just copy and paste again. Delete number two, add number three, Z index of three. Double click, change the image. And there we go. One more time. Copy, paste, change number four, Z index number four, double click, change the image to the fourth one, and there we go. All right, so we have four images stacked on top of each other. Okay, now let's turn off number four, three, and two. So when I mean turn off, I'm talking about display none, okay? So now if I click anywhere, it's clicking on image number one. It's not clicking on anything else. Even if I preview, it's only showing the first image. Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and um, add our interaction. So we're gonna add an interaction to hero. Our elements, our structure is done. Let's go to our hero right here. Go to our lightning bolt, interactions, element trigger, mouse move over element. Clicky, clicky. On mouse move, play mouse animation. Now we don't have any mouse animations created, so we're gonna create a new one. Plus, and here we go. So if you're not familiar with mouse move over elements, Here's a very basic tutorial. You have your X and Y, okay? So what happens when your mouse moves on the horizontal axis, uh, axis, axis, um, AKA X, okay? And what happens on Y? And you notice that you have percentages here. So the percentages means X 0% is all the way to the left of the canvas, X 100% is always to the right. And for Y, for web design, it starts at the top. So zero is up here. 100 is down here. Okay. So let's go ahead and wait. I think I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. Okay, we're not going to use a mouse move interaction. We're just going to use a hover. My bad. My bad. All right. Let me delete this. If you're watching recording, yeah. Um, yeah, this is not. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't set a trigger on hero. We're going to actually create four columns. Okay, we're gonna create four invisible columns. So that way when you hover over one column, it shows image one, it, and then you hover over another one, it shows image two and, and turns off one and so forth. Ooh, this just got a little bit harder in my head. Um, okay, and someone might come up with a better way to do this, but we'll see. All right, 
let's make one more. Yeah, we have to make a couple more elements. So we're not done with the structure. So I need to overlay with four invisible columns that will be the triggers, the hover triggers. So here we go. I'm going to Command or Control E inside of Hero and type in div and press return. And let's call this um, uh, hover columns wrapper. You can use a mouse move animation and just change the opacity of every image. Wait. Uh, is that better? Is that better? I think it is. I think it is. Web Desire is probably right. And wait, is this Web Desire, Webflow Web Desire? If he's who I'm thinking he is, then I'm like, welcome to the stream. No, not you. What's there's a there's a person on Webflow who does awesome animations. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'll look for you later. Unless, yeah, I'll look for you later. Anyways, I go back and forth in these in my head. Yeah, I think web, web desire is right. So let's go back to Hero and do a mouse move over element and just continue doing what I was doing. All right, so on the, we're only going to play with X. So on 0%, on 0%, we need to set something to opacity. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let me get this. So image one, image one, so opacity will be 100. No, I don't want the calendar, Windows. Image one, I want 100%. And here, I'm gonna set this to 100% as well. But the keyframe, so, okay, okay. Keyframe is going to be 20. Oh, no, no, 25. Because a quarter of 100 is 25, yeah. All right. I hope I'm doing this right. And this is, and this is affecting image one. And then I'm going to click on image two. When you set their display property. Ah, so I need to show image two. Okay, so on 26%, image one is going to have opacity of zero. Okay, okay. I think I'm doing this right. And at the same time, Image two is going to have an opacity of 100. And then I'm going to do the same thing on 50 for image two. Look at me who said, oh, this is going to be an easy stream. And in my head, I'm second guessing myself. OK. OK, Nelson, you think you're all good and badass. <laughs> all right. And then we'll do another one with 51, opacity zero. All right, let's test that out first. Because again, I'm second guessing myself. Let me delete all of these. This actually. Uh, okay, so let's see here. So we did this half, the left half. Okay. And my battery's running out. Come on. Come on, stream. Where's my charging cable? Is it my mouse or my keyboard? It's my keyboard. Okay, there we go. All right. The interaction you were describing could be used to create those annoying last minute pop ups, I assume. Uh, maybe. Okay, this isn't work. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if, if this one is the right move, uh, Web Desire or Jacob. 
because this art, this interaction already looks kind of confusing, and it's not working. Like, where's the first image? So that means this one has to start at, at zero. Come on. I don't know about this. It does have... Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> That different Z index. I did. Uh, I already did that. Web desire. I did that. Yeah, this is not gonna fly. I'm gonna go with the four columns thing. Because look how complicated this. I, I'm. I want to make the interactions uh, reusable and not confusing. Because look how confusing this is already. <laughs> um. And yes, the pros of Webflow can like easily figure this out, relative easily. But um, already, it's just looking like a mess. I'm getting anxiety just looking at it. Like, whoa, I don't like it. I'll save this interaction, but I'll delete the trigger, and we'll come back to it. <laughs> going back and forth. Oh, see, this is why you watch these streams to see me fail, right? <laughs> All right, let me try to figure it out before I even start talking like I know what I'm doing. Um, how, what do I call it? Hover trigger uh, wrapper. I'm going to set this to 100. Actually, no, I'm going to set it to position absolute. Give it a full and Z index of 10, so it's on top of everything, and then give it Flexbox. So that way I can um, create four equal columns just by adding four divs. So I'm gonna add one div and call this uh, uh, hover trigger, and there we go. And the hover trigger is going to be expanded. I'm gonna be, there you go. So I copy and pasted three times so I can have uh, four hover triggers. All right, so hover trigger number one shows number one. So this is what I was thinking. Not tap. Hover trigger. So on hover, start animation. I'm going to call this um, it could be done with mouse move, but it'll take a lot of steps. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to stop. Pablo, I, I want to make this more simple. Yeah, as best as we can. I don't know. And this could be the wrong way, too. This could be a very exploratory stream. Um, I'll call it image one. So what I'm going to do is turn off, uh, turn on image. So let's see if this, this can do this. So I'm going to click on image and give it a hide show of display block. And yeah, save. OK, let me try that. All right. And let me turn this one off. So let's see, will it work? OK, it did work. So my mouse is here. If I go here. It shows it. All right, nice, nice. Now, on hover out, start animation. I'm going to duplicate image one and call it image one off. And I'm going to do display none. Save. On, off. See, much easier than the mouse X. That's it. And now we just rinse and repeat for the rest. Ha, ha, let's rename this to on. Okay, cool. So I'll, I'll redo this from scratch once um, this is done. 
So what I'm going to do is ho hover trigger is mouse hover, start animation. And again, what I mean by rinse and repeat, uh, making it easier for people to create new ones or edit it is rather than having everything all in one interaction timeline and getting com confusing and weird, um, you can just click the kebab menu and click duplicate. And so it's going to say image one on two, but you can just rename it. So I'm going to click it, go to it, and we're going to name it image two on. And I can, if you don't know this, you can right click on an action and change the target. So I'm going to change that target to image number two, and it shows it right here. Save. And then um, for the hover out, oops, for the hover out, I'm going to duplicate the off to off, right click, change target, image, save, and let's check it out. So we're all the way into the right, nothing's happening. On, off, on, yeah! See? What if the mouse goes out of screen? Yeah, if it goes out of screen, then the browser doesn't detect the mouse, meaning it's no longer on the canvas, which then triggers the hover out interaction, which is display none. There we go. All right, rinse and repeat. And you know what? Watch this. I'm going to delete those two hover triggers. And what I can do is just copy paste twice. And so even the interactions, as you can see here with the lightning bolt, even the interactions were copied over. So I can just go over to interactions and that saved probably two or three clicks. So right click, uh, click the kebab, duplicate, image three. Pablo, would it be possible for you to edit down this tutorial even more so you can, or should we keep the mess ups? I don't know. Probably keep the mess ups. Image three on, right click, change target, targeting number three. Save, uh, duplicate, call it image three off. Christopher, welcome. I woke up sort of late here. It's all good. This is your weekend. You don't have to be here live. You don't have to be here live. You can watch the recording and it's all good. All right, let's test. One, two, three, off. Wait, why? Oh yeah, because I copied. So there you go. So one more right here. Duplicate for on save duplicate for off right click change target number four. I don't think I changed the target on the on right click change target off. There we go. One, two, three, four. There you go. Yeah, easier, easier than the mouse move over element and scalable. So that's the thing here. Um, I want to stress this. When you're creating websites for your clients, you're not creating it for yourself. You're creating it for your clients, users, but also for your client if they hire another web developer to come in. You want to make things as scalable as possible, easy enough to understand that a web developer can come in and take over. And again, if someone, if one of your clients are like, hey, I, have so I hired someone else, that's fine. That's fine because you've shown that you've made it as clean as possible that anyone can come in 
and you've given that much respect to your clients. If you make your working files or even your Webflow projects confusing or like badly organized, class naming, stru uh, HTML structure or whatnot, you're not helping. You're not helping anyone. All right. You're not even helping yourself because what if the project, the, the client is like, I love it. Doesn't touch a project for like a year. And then they're like, Hey, we need to make some updates. You go into your project and you're like, what did I even do? <laughs> so you're hurting yourself as well. All right. So this is what I mean. Keep everything clean, including um, your interactions, the naming of your interactions. Like, don't let Webflow just name it whatever when you duplicate. Um, take time to name it. This is image one on. This one is image one off. You know, uh, on, off, on, off. You make it super simple, all right? Uh, if you pack it all into one interaction, then how much more time would that take you? More stress would that take you? And I'm coming from a place where um, when I was the in-house web designer uh, at a huge company, and there's this term, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, some of you who do a lot of web development, you probably know this term, legacy issues. All that means is someone built something and then we're trying to modernize it, but there's all this old code that we have to freaking figure out in order to get this project done. Legacy issues. Ugh. So don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your client and don't do that to um, uh, your future clients, contractors. You know, help everyone across the way.